Yeah, um, you, you mentioned the riskiness of these dates. Like, I did not, I do not think this went the way ABC saw it going. These two older women chastising the be- beautiful contestants of the they season. They were very mean to them. Um, she goes up to Bibiana and she's like, what kind of fucking name is that? <laughs> And welcome to another brand spanking new episode of another Bachelor podcast. Hey, my name is Dylan. I'm saddled up next to one real Nicholas Davis. What's going on, everybody? Behind the glass is one producer, Patrick the Irish Bug Hickey. Hi, everyone. How are you? Um, a lot to get into tonight, mm. but we need to take care of a little housekeeping before we jump into all the drama. One, a little harsh last week. I think we we're a little harsh. We might have we might have came across a little negative about the entire franchise, and I just want to say I love it. Yeah, and I'm excited. Lots for these of positives girls. here. Uh, downloads and the reviews did not reflect uh, anything that you're talking about, but okay. <clears throat> See, it's interesting that you say that because I got a lot of feedback about um, about you just being so angry. Uh, now that we've know. addressed it, Patrick, I expect you to come out with more fervor than you ever have before and don't let him put you down as, i got i gotta be me dude as ari said to crystal you just be you mm-hmm. but we're getting a little ahead of ourselves a little bit more housekeeping facebook group go there how do you get there nick you go to facebook.com uh or the app as it were and you search another Bachelor podcast, and you join our group. We're trying to build a community, isn't that right, Patrick? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 um, you can. I think it's a good idea to you know interact with the people listening to this here podcast. Why don't you uh, put some content up there that yeah. we can talk about? Do the work for us, and also feel free to ask us questions, and then we'll answer those questions on the air. That way, we can you know connect. You want more. A, a little bit of work for you to be done, and that's what the Facebook group's for. Absolutely. And by the way, I want to say this. I went trolling through our Instagram followers this yeah. past here weekend. I was creeping around a little bit. I'm just going to say it. Uh, we have some good looking ladies out there. That There's that. It's pretty cool. Uh, which uh, I got to think. When'd you get married, Pat? Uh, what? Uh, anyway, uh, I didn't tell you. When'd you get married officially? Well, dude. Last I, year, right? Well, dude, my wife died last week. She fell out of a uh, the third story of a hotel. Getting uh, back balcony. to business about what this a show. Horrible thing to joke about. Uh, All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm talking here. I'm talking. I'm talking. Um, so I was trolling around, and and I see our our listenership. They're really, really good looking. And I got to thinking, I got an idea. I'm going to pitch to you guys right now on the fly. How about the first annual another Bachelor podcast beauty contest? Okay, uh, here's how it's going to go. Yeah. The ladies will send a photo. Uh, preferably in a bathing suit, and I will officiate and choose the winner, and I'll base it on three categories. How good-looking you are, um, how attractive you are, and your hair. All right. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Aye. All, in, <laughs> all opposed, say nay. 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 I think it's so funny, and like I don't want to go near the word commendable. Uh what you're doing right now is strange on account of we talked on mic and off mic about you cooling it. And what you're doing is digging a trench. <laughs> um, hey, Nick. I will say uh, not to discuss. Maybe maybe this should be done off air. But if, if you're so adamant about this Facebook group, <laughs> maybe you post some content, get the ball rolling a little bit. Patrick. It's, it's not hard to throw up a link. I think people would love to find out that January Jones and Nick Vile are together. So, me, Nick, you, cool it a little bit. Have more fun with this television program. Facebook, go there and be part of our community. community. And we will not be having a beauty contest composed of our Instagram followers. Absolutely not be doing that. And we will encourage Pat to stop looking through our followers list. (laughs) Hey, Let's let's get into this great episode of television, huh, guys? When we last left off, Crystal uh, Crystal had made some enemies, uh, and that seems to be carrying over to the next morning. 
Uh, actually, Dill, I hate to correct you there, but as you know, I am a detailed motherfucker. Uh, Bibiana. I'm glad you didn't say that with him. <laughs> no, 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 dude. I already got the shirts printed. So, Nick, please, next time, jump right. in there. I'm, gonna, I'm setting you up there. Uh, if you listened closely, Bibiana uh, says, we've patched things up. Everything that happened last week, we've moved on from. It wasn't the next day. It was a couple days later. I apologize. That's I'm fine. Not... I felt like it was just the morning after the row ceremony. Yeah. I, t- c- can you forgive me? Uh, Chris Harrison walks in and says, behind every man is a strong woman. And we get a group date card. Which means we need to do. All right, guys, uh, hit the music. All right, uh, this was. Uh, uh, <laughs> Here we go. Mikel, Jacqueline, Karen B, Tia, Marie, Bibiana, Becca, slash Terry, Crystal. Uh, strong, strong group of gals. It is. I think a lot of our, uh, a lot of the leaders in our power rankings yep. are participating in this date. Yep. As well are the rivalries that have formed so far. I do have to say there have been a lot of uh, group dates that have been risky in terms of uh, bodily harm. Uh, Last week we had a concussion. This week we had some bruised sensibilities. Another activity with a high chance you're going to end up with some chronic traumatic encephalopathy. (laughs) Um, Outcomes... Little Egypt and the farmer's daughter. Uh, that'd be Ursula Hayden and what was it? Ange- Angelica. What do you think? These two has beens were waiting by the phone for this call? <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's so sad. Um, I, I always say your hair that you're you're running with now traps you in the decade that was your best decade that you had, and theirs was obviously 1987. The brunette one looked like the singer what is uh, from yours Cinderella. If theirs is 1987, he has a timeless haircut, so you can't <laughs> tell. He's smart enough; he didn't commit. But I agree that they have 80s hair. That, those were their glory days. But I will say, at at least Ursula. Uh, she's actually done pretty well for herself. She's actually acquired the Glow Properties, and she's a consultant for Netflix <laughs> on the franchise. Wow. She, actually, she actually produced the documentary in 2012, and I won't say she's the only interesting one out of the two because a uh, fun thing about uh, Angelina. Okay, uh, Angelina. Her, her mother, actually the first woman to ever show her legs on Turkish television. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, when you rattled off Ursula's accomplishments, I was... Uh, I was kind of deflecting the aggression onto uh, Angelina because she was very intense. She seemed to be overcompensating. Yeah, um, you, you mentioned the riskiness of these dates. Like, I did not, I do not think this went the way ABC saw it going. These two older women chastising the be- beautiful contestants of the they season. They were very mean to them. Um, she goes up to Bibiana and she's like, what kind of fucking name is that? <laughs> She's like, it sounds like a bib. <laughs> She's like, what was your mom on when she named you? One could possibly say it was a little bit racist. Uh, <laughs> I would say a lot of it. <laughs> what kind of fucking name is that? Pat, do you have anything to say about this uh, this year date? I was just amazed that these two grandmas could uh, break the fragile spirits of, uh, of Bibiana and yeah. Tia. Uh, Bibiana breaks, Tia's in tears. This whole thing looks like it's going to be a disaster. And it kind of was. Uh, can I just say, if I was chosen to be the bachelor and the producers came to me in as this as one of the dates, I'd say, no, we're not, we're not going to do this. This is so cringeworthy, especially uh, with the reveal. With uh, I getting a little ahead of myself. Kenny, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think out. I think we're, I think we're about there. They practice a little bit, and then we get to the actual. Yeah, Kenny G, the man that we were so conflicted about um, all last season. I I just want to correct you super quick. Kenny G is a famous solo saxophonist. Uh, Kenny K or Kenny. King, the pretty boy Pitbull, is the contestant from... He's in fine form tonight. <laughs> Can I say something about Kenny and this whole wrestling thing? Watching yes. him jump around the ring and look for cheers, and we know that there were only 22 there, extras There are 70 people there. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was four rows of 14. There were about 56 <laughs> people there. I have to say this. If... You showed me a paycheck for this guy and he makes a million dollars a year, I'd still think he's sad in this career. <laughs> this line of work is Yikes. so sad. Um... And I, I, I bet he's maybe pushing 80, 80 grand a year and traveling yeah. with a travel schedule you do not no. envy. Uh, he shows up in whatever city he's been blown into at 6 o'clock in the morning. He eats breakfast, goes to workouts, takes a nap, 
wrestles that night. Gets on a flight, does it all over. All while FaceTiming his daughter. We've all seen the Mickey Rourke movie. It is not a glamorous lifestyle. He jams his thumb into a deli slicer at the end of that. It's only going to be two more decades until Kenny K's. I will say the timeless Marissa Tomei looking, yeah. looked amazing Beautiful in that, in that film. film. Great movie. One of uh, Darren Aronofsky's last good ones. <laughs> okay. Uh, getting off topic, I think that uh, we had a little bit of foreshadowing because when Tia is upset, when Bibiana is upset, Ari goes to Tia and only Tia to talk her down. Also, me and Nick were talking off mic. Off mic, of course. Ari looks like he has some type of vitamin deficiency. He is very strangely colored in the face. I would I would almost uh, venture guess to say he's possibly jaundiced. Yeah. I was originally thinking it might just be my television set. No. Uh, but multiple no. different screens. Uh, Dylan agreed. Uh, definitely yellow in the cheeks. Yeah, Something that to look out for. Mustard skin doesn't lie. Pat, have you uh, have you taken notice? I don't think Ari looks good. Um, they get some bad angles on him. Like, I'd actually tell all the camera people, like, hey, 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 shoot above my chin. They get angles below it. Makes him look like he's I getting could, a double chin going there. I could there. see you doing that often. <laughs> um, okay. I just thought their costumes, like, I, I thought the costumes were great. I thought Marik was a, a perfect gold digger. Like, that's the only costume she would have my lord did she look good okay i will say mikkel uh oh. actually scored some points with me what the a lunch costume. lady yeah. that was incredible she went the lunch lady and i kind of had this image of her as she's 23 year old divorcee and i thought divorcee. My, i thought she wouldn't be caught dead in something that didn't make her look sexy but right. she really threw herself into yeah, the comedy no. of it i was um, impressed you know who is trying to be sexy all the time is becca who is the sex kitten and she is defeated by lunch has been served in the first match. Uh, Marie and Lauren have that very sexually charged. Like it was it was very sexual, but it was just bad. Hottest uh, thing I've ever seen. OK, <laughs> you I know thought what? it was a bad because... match. The quality of the wrestling was terrible. They were just they were like square dancing. And I thought the editing was weird because they would they would pump in these noises of raucous crowds when they were just like spinning around looking at each other. And then we had Crystal absolutely ragdolling Jacqueline. Slamming her face into, into the mat. Uh, I don't know whose idea it was to match up Jacqueline, who right at the beginning of the day expressed a severe trepidation because she's so unathletic against Crystal, the professional athletic trainer, yeah. just slamming her head into the mat repeatedly. Uh, night day, Crystal takes him again immediately i thought that was such a dope move after the last scene we saw her get yelled at for this behavior and she goes and grabs her first can i throw out there even a a more dope move is that what you said it was yes dope? more cunning actually i would say mm. uh when crystal pulls uh the bachelor aside this time she does what i would do if i were a contestant which is hey i'm gonna really just call it out and really get what's going on in his head and ask him what what should I do? I have a clip. Can I play a clip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please play a clip. I'm sexy today. You're driving me crazy. It's very hard to have you in a room with a lot of other women. You know that, right? It is. It is, yeah. I got to check myself a little bit. Don't hold back. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So gross. You just be you. You're doing good. Doing good. Yeah, of course not. If you ever feel lost, you just come grab me. And be like, hey, give me some attention, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> she basically said, hey, do you want me to keep you know, being aggressive? You want me to back off? And she puts it in, in, in his lap to name what course she should take. Very smart move on her part. Um, I think uh, it's going to help her out. Uh, probably get her to the end. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's uh, really, really playing the game well right now. I will say... That um, the thing that he says to her in the beginning is the kind of thing that can get you in a lot of trouble in this show. When you tell somebody this early on that it's difficult being in a group uh, – in a room full of women with her in the room, 
it's not good for uh, for the quality and the narrative of the show. And if you're doing this to a person that actually has feelings for you, it makes you look like a scumbag, i.e. Dean. Or, you are so dumb. You are so dumb. Damn. What? He's one of our dumbest bachelors. We we yeah we we clarified that last week. <laughs> we are very clear on how dumb. <laughs> But let's give more hardcore examples of why he's dumb. Let's try to illustrate how he is dumb. Yeah, let's rather do Rather than explicitly saying. Right, right, right. Okay. Oh, yeah, we'll, pre- we'll present some various exhibits yeah. across this season. We've got a couple coming up tonight, which I am excited about. Uh, can, can, I, can I just jump in here? I know we're talking about uh, Crystal or we want to move on, but her voice is is getting even more fried by the <laughs> minute. Like, cl- can you clear <laughs> your voice? Um, you know, I've done a little digging. I've done a little digging. <clears throat> Turns out uh, she had a, throat cancer. No, no, no. A voice uh, like that can be related to childhood trauma. Uh, uh, the, the Washington <laughs> Times actually uh, posted a, an article in 2002. Um, it was titled "Child Abuse Affects Voice of Victims." A childlike voice often is a clue to tr- a traumatic past, says Dr. Pinsky. Doctors specializing in trauma say a person's vocal qualities can indeed change after they experience an abusive, uh, indecent, or a series of abuses in childhood. Ah, oh, it's uh, interesting. Yeah, but everybody knows that Dr. Glenn Pinsky is a charlatan. Could also pro- possibly be caused by uh, recovery from a pill addiction. That can really do it to your voice, too. Fair enough. Um, I know he's called the Kissing Bandit. I, for one, I don't know how you guys feel, am getting sick and tired of his moany, gross kisses. They're disgusting. They make my stomach hurt. There is definitely, I thought Becca M was really the culprit because we made note of this last episode, but Mm -hmm. it seems to be a pattern with all of the women he is locking lips with. Yeah. Well, if you think about that date at the, uh, what the hell were they at? They were at the outpost or whatever the fuck it was. It was the caravan outpost. He rolls like five ladies through there. They all sit down with him. He makes uh, small talk with him and then uh, commences with the tonsil hockey. Yep. Can you imagine being third in line there? Like, does he even <laughs> wipe his fucking mouth off, this <laughs> gross pig? Mm. Um, all right, so I want to say, um, Tia, his little interaction with Tia, I thought that was noteworthy. Uh, we were we, we were searching for uh, something that would exhibit that he was dumb. Uh, can, I, can I play a clip? Sure. I, I want to play a clip. Emotions are kind of getting real right now. You know, but the funny thing is, I expected you to just rock this thing. I know, thing. and I did too. And so when I saw you upset, I was like, huh, that's interesting. I'm normally not that. <laughs> can, I, can, I translate, Unbelievable. can I translate dumb guy into English for a second? Absolutely. When he says, huh, that's interesting. That's him saying... Oh, boy, I can already see this. If I'm with this girl, she's going to come home from work every day. I'm going to have to fucking sit and listen to her talk about all the coworkers and Shelly and human resources, a bitch. And she leaves her food in the fridge too long. And why is it always Shelly? Is that it- can you imagine these poor women walking around named Shelly? Everybody's abusing them with hypothetical HR positions. Uh, Patrick hates Shelly long. That's where it comes from. <laughs> um, she left cheers at the prime, man. He was, he's, he's never gotten over that. Oh, I was going to say, um, another thing that's happening here is, uh, just to jump ahead, uh, Bibiana pulls Ari aside at this same venue for a second. And what does she do? One of the biggest mistakes you can do on this franchise yep. is spend your time with him, basically backstabbing another girl as opposed to trying to sell yourself. To right. Him. And backstabbing and or talking shit on a girl who he likes much more than you. It's never going to work out. It's the death blow. I had the exact same same note written down it's the same mistake that iggy made never had a Icky, shot iggy. though he never had a shot it's the same mistake that taylor made when she was up against corinne yep. she went running it's it's never going to work out for you never work and that's why crystal she asked what she should do doesn't bring someone else up and she's killing the game she's right a now pro. when crystal gets back to the girls she's just absolutely delusional um i mean she's doing really really well in the competition but the way that she like talks to the girls about how they're doing and how their dates are going and how their time's going is really, really uh, maniacal. And then she ever even says 
to camera, she says, these girls are living in such a false reality. She talks to America and says that the rest of the girls are not attached to reality. You're giving bags of food to people who are not homeless, Crystal. Dripping with irony. Do you guys want to... You uh, are so dumb. <laughs> you are so dumb. Damn. <laughs> Do you guys want to take a break and get into some iTunes rating and reviews? Cool. All right, I'm really excited to be back. They uh, Just so the audience knows, uh, I should let you know behind the scenes here, Dylan and Nick tried to kill this segment, and I'm not going to allow it because I want you guys to have a voice. So here we go. We got a, a few reviews here this week, and I'm going to read them all. Just really quickly, can we say that we wanted to kill the bit of you bringing in a jacuzzi into the studio every week? Bring it up Hang the past! On! Sexually pleasing people who leave reviews. Especially in this current climate. And burning the studio down, after which we rebuild an entire new studio within a week and we do it all over. That's what we wanted to kill. Oh, I, I, love, you, I love hearing the reviews. I Me too. You, I thought you guys had a problem with the vibrator At, thing. Get to the reviews. All right, here we go. Um, I really like this. Um, this is from John M170. It says, I am a man. I don't watch reality TV, but when I found this podcast, I began watching The Bachelor with my fiance, and it has changed my perspective on the show. Boy, I like that. As I watch, I become excited by Nick. Please, by the way, my only critique on this is put my name first. Yeah, and, and don't Nick, mention Nick at all. Yeah, actually, preferably. Uh, Nick's Patrick and Dylan uh, will mention or elaborate on. More specifically, I wait for Patrick's profanity lace rants in regards to the vapid moronic stupid statements made by the contestants do yourself a favor and give this show a listen but prepare yourself for hilarity 10 out of 10 recommend boy i like that isn't that sweet you you look like you're you really like that dude you, you uh, look like you're getting off right now <laughs> I, I finished my shift at uber after reading that man it just made the day run a little you smoother. do uber huh dude it's i gotta make an extra buck on the weekends <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, then the second review is YES TO THIS, ALL CAPS, by Melanie Lemony. Boy, she says YES! Ah! I like that. That's it's pretty cool. Could have given a little bit more details, because when the people check in to read reviews to see if they like the show, they, they'd like to hear a little bit more in depth why you actually enjoyed it, but fair enough. Uh, all right, and the third one is AWESOME, uh, exploration point, uh, by Yelena <laughs> from Brooklyn. <laughs> Awesome podcast, so funny and enjoyable. I listen to it on my way to work or on way to anywhere. I burst out laughing and people wonder what the hell I'm listening to. Boy, I love that. I really enjoy that. You know what? I like that way better mm -hmm. uh, than someone else, you know, leaving a one star review. Yeah. Calling us misogynist that's, pigs. That's happened a couple times. Uh, ironically enough, for the profane rants that. The first review like so much. Can I can I say uh, I have a little beef. I, as I've mentioned, I like five star reviews or one star re reviews. I have no problem with uh, one star reviews. Here, here's my issue though. Um, we're not a fucking restaurant, okay? You didn't come in here and then there was a you know a rat turd cr uh, under your table, or maybe our waitress was a little cunty to you. So it's like this, this is a free service that we're offering you. Like, how fucking dare you take the time to click on one star? Like, you if you didn't like it, just just leave, okay? It, like, we're giving this away for free. Like, if you really like it though, you should tell us you like us. You do and, not have a problem with one-star reviews. And tell other people you like us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, guys. All right, so I, I, I don't want to, like, pander to the audience, but I will say this. You're uh, the if, best audience that's ever. You guys on. are the best. <laughs> Hold on. No, uh, no, no. Um, if you guys leave us a review, I will send you a prize, and it will be worth more than $8. So if you leave us a review this week, I will mail you a prize. Wow. Nice. I kind of like that. Now, this is not a, a, a collective effort, right? Like, we're not chipping in. Oh, for sure not. I like it because we're not big enough yet to get in all the legality that usually goes away with these type of promotional giveaways. Yeah, usually. There's a lot of red tape going along with the FTC and such, but we're yeah. not on their radar yet. No, we are not. And He's, hey. He explicitly said it's around eight bucks. We will get there, though. But- we do want to say thanks again for leaving such kind words. We'll see you next time. 
It's time for a one-on-one. -on -one. That was beautiful. One-on-one -on -one time with Lauren S. You had me at Merlot. Is that what it, that's what it said, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, did you catch where she says, uh, well, I'm pretty sure after I heard that, I was thinking this might have something to do with wine. Pat, I love when we have the same notes. I wrote down, um, she has an inkling that this could have to do with wine. Uh, I feel like she's just a little too stoked for him. She's just a little too into it. And um, although he he says things like blast and amazing all the time, I feel like he's uh, not into this from the get-go. Couldn't agree more. Her her enthusiasm was dripping with desperation. Uh, that's your only issue with her? Uh, uh, how about yep. referring to yourself in third person? At some point she says, and I quote, this is a Lauren type of date in a fried voice, which you know I hate. Uh, we do know that, yeah. And, uh, you know, my wife claims that Paris Hilton was the uh, original OG fried voice, but I, I don't know. We'll have to do some research on that. I think it was actually Anne Boleyn. Hmm. Phyllis Diller. You know, Ari doesn't have the greatest voice himself. Um, and he uses this voice once they land in Napa to, get this, say that he wouldn't mind settling down there. He sees himself in Napa. Every asshole that's ever been up there. Not thinks every that. asshole. Every everybody. Napa's absolutely beautiful. You're surrounded with gorgeous vistas and wine all over the place. Of course you can, Ari. I, I've never really gotten it. I mean, there are. It's okay looking, but there are much more scenic uh, places in nature. Like uh, you go to Colorado, more lush green. Everything looks brown in Napa. I what couldn't tell is, you how wrong you are. What is going on with your eyeball right now? I can't. I don't know if my contact's in or I dropped it. Not a whole lot happens on the date. They drink wine and talk about how they're going to bed earlier and earlier these days. <laughs> and then they go on a night date where she begins to ramble. And I feel bad for her because I, I would probably be nervous as, as all heck if there were a bunch of cameras around and I had to feign interest in somebody who was as stupid as Ari. So genuine and nice. I don't think he's... When he sends her home, I, I started seeing a pattern in his reasoning for uh, breaking it off with girls uh, in that none of the things that he says make any sense. I have a clip. <laughs> yeah. You want to hear a clip? Go for it. So today was an opportunity for me to get to know you. And I love that you love your family and you show me a lot of you today. And I really, really wanted this for us. Mm. But... I'm sorry. I can't give you this. It's, and it's because I just, I don't even know. Boy, that's what a woman wants as far as closure. Hey, uh, bitch, don't let the door hit you in the ass. And by the way, I have no fucking clue why I'm doing this. I, uh, I'm really sorry I can't give you this rose because I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to say this explicitly, but I don't like you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, this has to be a producer move that they even got him to go on a one-on-one -on -one with someone he, they didn't think he had a chance with. Because, like, that is such a vicious way. <laughs> Take them out on the date. Literally hold the rose. Like, oh, yeah. Brutal. <laughs> and she just has this look of anticipation on your place. Be like, no, I can't. Yeah. Like, I was, I was... just don't talk to her and send her home in a rose ceremony. Like a gentleman. Well... It was a very hard goodbye, though it didn't seem that difficult at all. Uh, but alas, somebody comes and takes the bag from the house. And what a reaction <laughs> we got. <laughs> they lost their shit. Someone yelled, you can go back. Someone literally yelled, this is so dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Caroline immediately burst into tears. Immediately. It, it was havoc. It was and havoc. Crystal is aghast, and it quickly turns into a terrifying smile. She, she is like the Joker. After the room settles a little bit, uh, 
Crystal then starts talking to all the girls about how much she loved her. She was just smiling at the news of her being eliminated. And Caroline is over it. And I love Caroline for doing what she did when Crystal started talking that shit. It just warmed my heart to see Becca Kay and Caroline consoling each other. Yeah. I like to see that they're friends because they both come across as really genuine, funny people to me. And yeah. they seem to be buds. You know who else is uh, genuinely funny? Annalise. <laughs> Not intentionally. We got a group date, which means we need a roll call. Oh, uh, you, you, you want a roll call? Pat, you, roll call. You don't need to clarify. Roll call! Hit the music. Ashley, Becca K, Brittany, Jenna, Caroline, Chelsea's, and Annalise. And the day card, like you mentioned, did say love is rough. And I thought uh, quite the sandbagging by Crystal not to mention right off the bat that it was spelled R-U-F-F. I know. She just left the girls hanging. Like, yeah. that's of note. Do you not know how to spell rough, Crystal? Because that's what I'm thinking. Yep. I think that's a definite possibility. Now, listen, this... Uh, this date starts off with the girls being excited because who wouldn't be excited about spending a day with Fred Willard and dogs? And Annalise is not. And I wrote down that she is pathetic. And I felt <laughs> bad when I wrote that down when we heard the final story at the end of this group date, which was when she was a young girl, seemed to be homeless. She was staying in a house, a very old, old dog named Sunshine. Almost bit her eye out of her face. <laughs> Which I think you could say is a traumatic experience. I, I have to think she might have embellished just how severe it was. <laughs> I would like to uh, speak with the doctor that attended to her and see just how close she was to getting that eye removed. Uh, but, hey, uh, when you've... The, a face bite's a face bite. <laughs> Once after this second story about trauma, the Bachelor producers were out for blood with Annalise. Uh, she became a punching bag. <laughs> she did that poor thing. Um, it's just so funny. Like they shit on her the entire episode. He's like, I love dogs. It's an important part of me and a relationship cut to Annalise immediately. <laughs> and, and then they did that on, again, a very high, highly stylized <laughs> flashback that it just is so funny to me because it fits <laughs> with nothing. No other second. The tone of... <laughs> is completely off. <laughs> And it just kills me every time. Please keep that up. It is seriously like they ripped reenactments from Dateline. Yeah. It is completely off. Uh, or a much more B-level like. Uh... I rewound it three times. <laughs> Tears were coming down my eyes. I laughed so hard. What do you guys think about the name Bastion for a dog? It. it uh... I don't think it's. Th I, I was kind of like hating on it, but it, you name your dog whatever you're going to name it. Uh, I think it, maybe it's kind of symbolic because this show is his last bastion for love. Yeah, I was wondering if there was any... Uh... Or is it just so short for Sebastian? Who knows? <laughs> hey, guys, remember the uh, show meeting we had before this where we weren't going to spend time on uh, topics that uh, the audience wouldn't give a flying Well, not about? comedic gold we weren't referring yeah, to. Yeah, and I would say that the nickname for Sebastian wouldn't be Bastion. It would be Seabass. Or Bassy. Um, hey, this uh, is a magical date because of one thing and one thing only, and that is the national treasure that is Fred Willard. Uh, Nick, why don't you tell the joke he told to America on ABC on Monday night? My nephew walked in with a piece of dog poop in his hand, and he was like, here, look what I almost stepped in. I mean, that's the kind of joke writing that you just don't get anymore. Best in Show is one of my favorite comedies, and it's so wonderful to have him here. It's also sad to see pe people that are so talented as they get older and then they're falling apart and not a, a, as, as on top of things as they used to be. Although I will say Chris Harrison wasn't a good side man with him either. He was absolutely not. I will say if you love Best in Show, uh, check out the much less revere, revered and much more recent uh, Mascots available on Netflix. That's a very good film as well. Or Spinal Tap. He had a, only one or two oh, scenes in that, so... but he was really solid there. Hey, can I say something about Harrison? This asshole works like, what, six months a year? You don't want to take some improv classes just to kind of, I don't know, maybe every once in a while someone might put you on the spot and you have to say something funny or provocative or something. Nothing? 
I, I, th- I thought he was good last week with Bobby O'Toole or whoever the fuck that racer was. I think that was all Bobby Gordon that uh, okay. carried the weight of Chris Harrison. And I have you. to agree. I think maybe some improv classes. And Chris Harrison won't be on Instagram last night complaining about being cut out of scenes because evidently he actually jumped in at one point during the Kenny Jeez. King and Ari, Ari thing. And he hit uh, Kenny over the head with a chair to give Ari the match. And they didn't show any of that. Yeah. Well... So a no little one, improv classes, maybe you won't be cu- getting cut out. No one wants to see you, Chris. You need more object permanence when you're hitting someone with that. Well, I like that steel chair. Um, hey, this dog show starts. A uh, dog show that Ari states is going to be epic, and it was uh, not <laughs> <laughs> another disaster. It I felt like a of a group date. Disaster. I don't know. If those uh, those baby cries were edited in, but they were edited in wonderfully if they were, uh, and I'm sure those were real baby cries because that entire day was just <clears throat> horrifying. All those children wanted to see was an animal jump through a hoop, and it seemed like uh, the ladies were the ones doing all the jump through hoops. You know what really pissed me off? Ashley saying, these dogs are the worst trained dogs in the world. Ashley! They were jumping on your back when Gail was around. You're just a terrible master. You're letting them run all over the place. Yeah, you're the trainer. So, Can we get into this uh, this evening portion of the group date? Oh, they once again uh, uh, shovel shit on Annalise by making her shovel shit. That was lovely. <laughs> yeah, night, <laughs> night portion. Night portion. Um, he takes Chelsea right away, and their conversation is... I mean, it is something to witness. Lacking. Um, she says that this, that the group date was symbolic of her own life. I'm not sure, but if her standing on a stage in front of a bunch of strangers trying to make dogs jump through hoops that aren't doing that is symbolic of your life in any way. Sounds like you've been a gigantic failure. <laughs> she says uh, it was awesome to see him in his own element, which was in a white tuxedo at a makeshift dog show at the Grove. <laughs> <laughs> Pat is once again not in the glass, looking on the computer. What are you doing? I was looking for that clip that Nick was supposed to send me an hour ago. And Nick, you sent me an empty email with no file in it. Oh, shit. Chelsea says to him that she couldn't have thought of a better time to come to this show. I can think of a better time. When you didn't have children. It would be way better on account of she wouldn't be leaving her children. Agree or disagree? I 100% agree. Actually, I, I want to like uh, – I, I would like to uh, create a petition. I don't want any more – parents on this goddamn franchise it's sad i don't like it it makes me hate the person already i can never like root for him or no. anything and also also i want all the contestants to be uh between uh 30 and Uh-oh. 35 no one that's ever going to really be thinking about getting married is in their 20s well no let's let's get into this here uh I, I have to agree with Pat there. It wouldn't hurt to have at least someone who's within seven years of The Bachelor. I don't get it. Yeah, you know who isn't? Becca M. She is so obnoxious. Okay. I know I said I was going to be more positive. Actually, I didn't say I was going to be more positive. You told the audience I was going to be more positive. Can I say something about her hair? Sure. All right. I was. They had some close-ups on her this episode. Okay, they got really close there. She got a lot of FaceTime. And what I noticed is the hair thing for her is an option that makes her look edgy because I was picturing long hair on her. She'd just be basic. She'd just be basic. <laughs> Honestly. It, when when Patrick is uh, that uh, biting and and uh, not nice like we said he, he should <laughs> be, nice, yeah. uh, I, I, I hate that I have to agree with him. But, Patrick, if you scroll through her old hit Instagram pictures, you couldn't be more spot on. She had long blonde hair. She just looks like... <laughs> you guys are doing a lot of work on Instagram, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's where it happens. Hey, hey not an antiquated hey, 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 Facebook hey, 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 hey. group. Before you transition, Dylan, um, I want to dig- digress for a second. Okay. We were talking about, well, actually, I was talking about, like, you shouldn't be, like, seeking out a marriage or be on one of these shows seeking out a marriage. When you're 22 years old? Yes. And you don't have the emotional intelligence or the experience 
to actually qualify yourself to actually be uh, in it. I think she has more emotional t- intelligence than Ari does. Totally. The, totally. These totally. two fools, they're, they're not prepared for uh, a relationship. Well, I still think that she's got the, uh, the upper hand. Uh, she has the high ground, Anakin! <laughs> um, he likes her a lot. Because she literally had the high ground. She climbed on top of him. Yeah, well, um, it's because she's the opposite of Chelsea. Like, Chelsea says to him that she came here to discover herself in another human being. Yeah. Which, I mean, you know, I guess you can do that, but it just reeks of uh, not knowing oneself, I guess. Uh, Becca is the exact opposite. She's playing these games with him, and he does have a mushy, mushy brain, so it works. Uh, but she says things like, uh, you like me because you know that I don't need you. After knowing him for a week and a half. <laughs> Which is bizarre. It was a very bold statement by such a young participant in this contest, but it seemed to have worked. <laughs> Hook, line, and sinker. Like, again, I, I, I'm I'm complex by the their little <laughs> fondness for each other. Uh, hey, can I say... Perplexed. Sorry. <laughs> I've had a lot of drinks. While Beck is doing well, uh, Annalise is not. Um, she continues to struggle throughout the evening. And uh, more brilliant work on the editor's behalf. Annalise has a conversation with him about their physical chemistry. And they keep cutting immediately after they have these conversations to him macking <laughs> on <laughs> seemingly every other person in the house. It was an assembly line, as Patrick pointed out. A conveyor belt. Um, poor Bibiana sets up this beautiful stargazing little spread. It was a bed, dude, with with flowers and shit. Day bed. Uh, she says that and that's... And a telescope. That's her. Like, that's Bibiana. Like, just staring at the at the stars. You know, that's her comfort zone. Lauren B. takes it. She walks out. And he tells her, give me five minutes. <laughs> I love that. He, by the way, he had like six chicks on that bed. Yeah. She said the devil's working OT. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a great uh, line. Okay. Okay. I, I, here's what I have to say to Bibiana and Annalise. At some point, self-respect. Just walk out of the house. Right. You know this isn't going to go well. He's not into you. You know it. He knows it. Everyone in the building that is alive knows it. Well, it was especially cringeworthy because it had um, – it resembled uh, our, our dear Fred from last season who was just in dire straits and then asked if he could kiss Rachel Lindsay, the bachelorette, who we all know and hate. And you should be careful because you just might feel something. <laughs> that was Fred's line. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. So after he's done uh, with all those other girls on Bibiana's bed, he, he makes his way over uh, to, uh, on the other side of the building yeah. at a completely different setup, pulls Tia there, and whips out a fucking bottle of moonshine. The setup, which also included hay bales, yeah. uh, spurred former contestant Raven Gates, my one of my personal favorites, uh, to tweet, uh, country girls are more than just moonshine and hay bales. You know, you say that she's one of your favorites. She is not one of mine. We talked to DeMario in this here studio. He told us about the horrible things that she did, uh, amend that, psychotic things that she did. And now she's she knows the, the set pieces of The Bachelor. They're not supposed to be representative of a culture, however niche it may be. Yeah, I definitely don't think Ari was saying that is all that Tia's personality is encompassed. But I will defend Raven because I'm sorry she was a little uh, suspicious of Demario who essentially cheated on Rachel when she, in her past, with the only man she had ever slept with, was also cheated on and then asta- attacked him with a stiletto. Yeah. And I'm glad I finally got to bring that up. I wanted to mention that to Mario and give him that little backstory about Raven. Yeah. And I feel like her heart was in the right place, and yeah. now they're friends. Yeah. Enough said. So lay off, Raven. But you were very uh, interested in, in the moonshine. Well, actually, uh, I, I didn't see where he pulled it out from, and was this specifically for Tia? 
because she's white trash. And from that place in the middle of the country that no one on either coast likes to discuss. I, I, I think you fly you're, over. I think you might be onto something. Uh, it wasn't just for Tia. He probably was trying to shove that moonshine down every single one of those females' throats. <laughs> <laughs> Which in, I would this, in hey, this climate i have a question do you think ari has ever read a book like a book not like a book explain the difference between a book and a book <laughs> <laughs> uh i mean something that what do you he, mean by that well like in school like you force you're forced to read uh, mat- uh written materials and then when you're in your 20s You'd go like at the airport and in the gift shop, there's a book there or something. You might pull that off the shelf and read it. Got it. Do you I, think he's ever listened to an audio book? Yeah. I mean, he's that dumb. He's done neither. I think he's listened to a couple Tim Ferriss books while he's driving around in Arizona. I bet he read uh, old Dale, Dale Sr.'s biography. Yeah. When I was racing, I used to bang hookers in the asshole, do a line of cocaine, drink a Budweiser. Sponsor of the number three, and, and get I definitely, racing. definitely don't think I'm gonna die in a fiery car crash. You know, Nick. I mean, Dale. It wasn't actually that fiery, if you remember. I'm really glad you corrected me on that. It actually, it, it turns out, it's always those crashes that look like they weren't very high impact fluke that'll accident. kill you. Accident, complete fluke accident. Why was there a bus in NASCAR? Hey, we got to get into this here uh, rose ceremony. Uh, as we talked about, Bibiana gets sent home. As does Annalise. Bibiana is the only one sent home in this uh, rose ceremony here. Uh, he gives her another very ambiguous reason for her departure, which is it's just these decisions aren't easy. But at least she found out that she was amazing. Nick, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I had my little wifey keep track of a certain word Ugh. last night. The word was amazing, and I also said you can actually count amazing. Uh, <laughs> it was said twenty three times. Um, can, can I? Can I? Uh, can I talk to the people that listen to the show for a second? That's what. That's what we're doing. Oh, it's unspoken. <clears throat> Today, I would like to address the audience, my co-hosts, and the world. There are dark times before us unless we change course. I would like to immediately call for a cease and desist order for the overuse and in most cases the incorrect use of the word amazing. Or, more importantly, its handicap relative, amazing. For too long, stupid people around the world with soft brains have chosen the word amazing as their only verbal response to what other dummies say. For example, your friend tells you she's thinking of starting a fashion company. A dumb person's response is, that's so amazing. That's not even close to amazing. Let me tell you what amazing is, people. When 10 busybodies push a fucking beach whale back into the ocean. Or when you find out there's an eight-year-old Asian kid that speaks five languages. Starting today, I need all of you within the sound of my voice to punch anyone who misuses the word right in the fucking face. Even if it's an 11-year-old girl. Let the rights be wronged and end moronic speech. God bless you all. Uh, he did say it a lot. He does sound like uh, our dear leader when he's uh, describing things. He lacks eloquence at every turn. Um, he almost exclusively uses the word amazing to describe the feelings and the people on this show. When you said our dear leader, were you referring to Donald J. Trump? Oh, yeah, the man you voted for? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, Dylan I had, voted for Trump. <laughs> hey, hey, I had a hey, this guy over here. I hates had a Jews. Bla- <laughs> I, 
I had a blast with you guys tonight. I had a super fun time. Uh, it's far too hot in here, so we got to get out of here. Pat? Yeah. You ready to say goodbye? Good. Well, I'm Dylan. Saying goodbye. Nick, say goodbye. Follow our Instagram at Another Bachelor Podcast. Goodbye. Pat, oh, say goodbye. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, join that group, too.